Hey, order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Lord Feldman, Andrew Feldman, is chairman of the Conservative Party. He's a close confidant of the Prime Minister and a man substantially responsible for upholding decent standards of behaviour among party activists. And he finds himself now in the midst of a crisis over the behaviour of one senior campaigner, Mark Clark. The crisis arose when a young activist killed himself earlier this year, citing as a cause bullying by Mr Clark. Questions were raised, not least by this programme. Had enough been done to prevent that? Former party chairman Grant Shapps accepted blame and resigned his government post. But Lord Feldman has defended his own role by saying he knew nothing of the issue until summer this year. There is just one problem. A former activist has told Newsnight Lord Feldman was given a dossier of bullying allegations in 2010. Here's James Clayton. The Prime Minister's inner circle has been described as a chumocracy, David Cameron's propensity to surround himself with his closest allies. But of all these relationships, it's his friendship with this man that is one of the PM's closest. Lord Feldman is not only the Conservative Party chairman, but he's also David Cameron's former university tennis partner. It perhaps explains why the party was comfortable to see Grant Shapps resign over the affair, but determined to protect Lord Feldman. So we're going to walk down here, I'll show you some of the hoardings and things like that, and then we're going to dive into the actual market and meet some of the market traders. But Feldman's career now hangs on how much he knew about disgraced activist Mark Clark's alleged bullying and whether he acted with enough alacrity when complaints were first made. Mark Clark denies all those allegations. The student vote is really important. We as students make up such a... Since the death of the young activist Elliot Johnson in September, there has been a stream of revelations about Feldman's handling of the affair. Last week, the party effectively acknowledged its internal investigation had been inadequate when it handed its inquiry to an external law firm. But the biggest threat to Lord Feldman's career may come from a statement his party made three weeks ago. A spokesman said that the party does not tolerate bullying or any other improper behaviour. Lord Feldman acted immediately to set up an internal disciplinary inquiry as soon as he received the allegations in August 2015, of which he was previously wholly unaware. Tonight, a former Conservative activist tells Newsnight that Lord Feldman was made aware of bullying long before August 2015. Patrick Sullivan has known Clark since 2006. He says he's attempted to stop bullying in the youth wing of the Conservative Party called Conservative Future. He claims that he, along with Conservative MP Ben Howlett, compiled a dossier of complaints about bullying, a hard copy of which was handed into Feldman five years ago in 2010. Uh, I've known Ben Howlett for a number of years. Um, he won an election um, for Conservative Future Chairman uh, and was uh, subject to bullying during that election campaign and actually subsequently during his chairmanship. He has a strong anti-bullying stance in his campaign uh, because, as I said, there had been a culture of bullying. Uh, as soon as he is elected, um, myself, Ben, uh, helped compile a dossier and uh, that dossier was uh, given by Ben to Lord Feldman and Saeed Razi. But the dossier is not the only thing. There were complaints about Mark Clark which were given to Roger Pratt uh, in 2008. So complaints about Mark Clark have been something that Conservative Central Office have known about for a very long time. It's believed that the dossier contained the complaints of a number of young activists and would have ended up in the old CCHQ behind me. Now, we've spoken to a couple of people who have helped compile the dossier and they say that Mark Clark's name was definitely in it. Patrick Sullivan says that the response to the dossier was initially very positive. Saeed Avazi was uh, very vigilant uh, in uh, regards to bullying 
and ensured that uh, anybody with a reputation of bullying was not involved in Conservative Future or given access to young people. And then that somehow changed later on? And that somehow changed later on after she left, yes. Sullivan's testimony appears to support what Ben Howlett told Newsnight three weeks ago. Lord Feldman has been well aware of all of this um, for, for a very long period of time. Howlett has refused to discuss the contents of the dossier with Newsnight. He says he will pass his information to the inquiry. This is the latest in a series of revelations that raises questions about whether the party dealt appropriately with warnings of bullying and Clark. Last week, Newsnight reported that a memo had been handed into CCHQ by a party worker in August. The memo said that Clark was sociopathic and dangerous and warned that if he was not kept away from the party's youth wing, the result could be devastating. Lord Feldman ordered an internal investigation after seeing that memo. However, Clark wasn't suspended by the party until after Elliot Johnson's death a month later. I think it was quite shocking that Mark Clark was able to uh, continue with his road trip 2020 whilst uh, this investigation was in process. Elliot Johnson's father, Ray, believes there needs to be more accountability at the top of the Conservative Party. I have no personal acts against Lord Felwyn, but I put, fully believe that any, any head of an organisation take responsibilities for whatever happens within the organisation. And if Lord Felman has been made aware some years ago of, of accusations of bullying, then he should, he should take responsibility and go. Lord Feldman continues to stress that he simply did not know about bullying or about Mark Clark. That was James Clayton reporting. Well, tonight, Lord Feldman uh, sent us a statement saying, I was wholly unaware of allegations of bullying and inappropriate sexual conduct by Mr Clark prior to August 2015. Such behaviour is abhorrent to me, and had this been brought to my attention, I would have taken immediate action to investigate as I have done since I received the complaint in August 2015. I've been getting away with it all.